The sudden death of Dr. Oliver O'Grady on 22nd May last year came as a great shock to family and friends who still mourn the loss of a talented and engaging young man who liked nothing better than to share with the wider community his passion for exploring landscapes. For nearly a decade, he was to roll out a series of local community-based archaeological digs in and around the Lomond Hills in Fife and Kinross. And it is on behalf of Kinross Martian Museum and those whose lives he touched in the Kinrossshire parish of Port Moak that I'd like to say a few words by way of appreciation. I first met Oliver in 2009 when he was working for Perth and Kinross Heritage Trust. But it was not until two years later that we really connected with a view to working together on an archaeological dig on St. Serf's Island in Loch Leven. Remarkably, I was able to find the very first email he sent me on 23rd July 2011, in which he wrote, I would certainly be happy for you to attend the project either as a participating volunteer or simply for a visit to the island. Perhaps there may also be potential for developing some kind of productive collaboration between the project and Kinross Museum. That collaboration soon followed. Kinross Marshall Museum had just opened its doors a year earlier in February 2010, and this seemed a good opportunity to expand our research activities and engage museum friends and volunteers in a community-based archaeological project for the very first time. In Kinrosshire, uh, a visit to St. Serf's Island is akin to the holy grail of places to visit in the neighbourhood, and there was no shortage of volunteers. Oliver had selected St. Serf's Island with a view to investigating the early medieval Chaldee monastery on that island, because it benefited from substantial historical documentation. It had not been subject to archaeological survey since the late 19th century, and because the site's relative isolation had good potential for preservation of early medieval remains. The proposed survey would build on a successful geophysical survey carried out by the Chaldee Archaeology Project a year earlier in 2010 at Fortingal, contributing to a wider programme of new fieldwork at early medieval monasteries in East Scotland. Very quickly, Oliver developed a rapport with the volunteers, of which I was one. He was a good communicator and had an extremely personable approach. He had a facility for putting the survey in context and explaining the wider picture in a way that could be easily understood. It was also an opportunity to learn how to be an archaeologist working in the field. We undertook the walkover and then the geophysical survey leading up to the digging of two trial trenches, when re which revealed a, a, a possible medieval fish pond and a vallum or enclosure with an outer ditch containing a variety of items, uh, including shards of pottery. These surveys were eventually written up by Oliver and published in the 2017 Tafak Journal, volume 23, under the title, St. Serf's Island, Exploring a Monastic Landscape on Loch Leven. As one project came to an end, another emerged close by in the form of the Living Lomans Landscape Partnership Programme. Between 2013 and 2016, Oliver was to play a key role as lead archaeologist in developing an understanding of the historic landscape in and around the Lomond Hills in a discrete project named Discover the Ancient Lomonds. As a board member of the partnership and theme leader for the Historic Landscape Programme, I worked closely with Oliver in planning a series of surveys that included an historic environment audit a search for 1818 Division of Commonty boundary stones and three big digs at East Lomond Hillfort, Lochor Castle and Falkland Deer Park. In addition, we organised a series of walks, talks and workshops engaging experts with communities in Fife and Kinross, stimulating an interest in exploring and caring for local landscapes. An imaginative open day at Lochor Castle devised by Oliver brought people from nearby communities such as Balingri, Cross Hill and Lahore uh, 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 to engage in activities that included uh, medieval style 
uh, sword fighting and cookery, uh, and also parchment making and medieval writing. There was something for everyone. The restoration of the castle and the telling of the castle story have been much appreciated by the local community who see Lahore Castle as part of their special landscape and Oliver as a good friend who helped make it happen. In addition to all of these activities carried out under the banner of Discover the Ancient Lomans, there were written numerous detailed reports as well as attractive and informative publications available to the wider community. Amongst these were the 26 page the archaeological landscape of the Lomond Hills, and a group of archaeological hotspot cards focusing on East Lomond Hill Fort, Lochor Castle, Chancefield Trenches, the West Lomond Cairn, and the 1818 Boundary Stones. In all of this living Lomond activity, both in planning and in the field, I got to know Oliver and his meticulous and knowledgeable way of working that was always geared towards engaging community volunteers, some of whom would go on to train as archaeologists, no doubt enthused by his dynamic and inspiring approach to exploring the historic landscape. Well, no sooner had the Living Lomans partnership come to an end in 2016 than Oliver spotted that grants were available in 2017 from the Heritage Lottery Fund and also from Historic Environment Scotland for community projects aligned with the year of history, heritage and archaeology. Undaunted, we submitted an application for a project focused on the Kinrosshire Parish of Port Moak, and two awards were made. Straight away, we were into another packed year of storytelling and archaeology, the latter, of course, being led by Oliver. The Our Port Moak Uncovering Stories from the Past project connected closely with the community and the local primary school in particular, proving Oliver's ability to engage with all age groups in a series of muckle digs in people's back gardens, as well as larger digs at important sites, such as Old Port Moak on the former shoreline of Loch Leven, and on Dunmore, which proved to be an Iron Age hill fort. Talking recently to one of Oliver's volunteers on the dig at Dunmore, I was told about an amusing incident that demonstrated Oliver's quick wit and sense of humour. Engaged in giving a pre-dig briefing to a group of six volunteers with Loch Leven and the Lomond Hills forming a magnificent background, Oliver was unaware that half a dozen cows had approached him from the rear. They stood seemingly engrossed in what he had to say. Laughter broke out and Oliver turned to face his bovine audience with the observation, observation that the book on archaeology do's and don'ts says you should not approach animals but it says nothing about what you should do if animals approach you. The Chaldee Archaeological Project surveys on St. Surf's Island in Loch Leven, the discovery of the ancient Loman segment of the Living Landscape Partnership Programme, and the Hourport Moak uncovering stories from the past, in quick succession provided a packed eight years of archaeology under Oliver's leadership, before he went north to work on a heritage project in Badenoch. Each of these projects leaves a lasting legacy, not only in terms of an invaluable record of historic landscape studies, but also in terms of the many personal memories and friendships experienced by volunteers and members of the wider community who always held Oliver in the highest regard. Always coming up with new ideas for promoting archaeology, Oliver joined the Tayside and Fife Archaeological Committee and had just written a set of proposals for Tafak to consider before his untimely death. Oliver is dearly missed by the members of Tafak. Oliver O'Grady not only revealed new insights into our local landscape, he became a good friend to us all. In concluding this appreciation, I can only say, Ollie, we thank you and we will remember you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and welcome to the TAFAC conference. My name is Joe Fitzpatrick. I'm the chairman of the Falkland Stewardship Trust, a committee member at TAFAC, and the chairman of the Fife Field Archaeology Network. 
I was also project director of the East Lowland Excavations in 2017 and 2019, where I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Oliver O'Grady. I'm honoured this morning to be asked on behalf of TAFAC to give an appreciation to our fellow committee member, colleague and friend, Dr. Oliver O'Grady. And I'm now going to switch screens onto the small presentation that I have to accompany my words. So please bear with me. An appreciation of Oliver, oops. Oliver's loss to the world of archeology span and to family and friends in May last year was sudden, unexpected and traumatic. It was traumatic for a lot of people. Many of us were stunned and shocked and still today in November, 2021, cannot quite grasp the reality of that loss. I was privileged to work with Oliver on all three excavations on East Lomond, which sits within the Falkland Estate. And their paths first crossed in 2014, just prior to my own retirement, after 36 years working in local authority education and community services. From early on, I recognised a fine mind, sharp, inquiring, eager to investigate and challenge. That was combined with an infectious enthusiasm for his subject, archaeology. And that infection was combined with an all too rare ability to communicate his knowledge and enthusiasm very effectively to others. Put simply, he inspired people. Here's a picture of Oliver in his element atop East Lomond. He's directing an excavation, he's managing a team of people there in the background in one of the trenches. He's inspiring people. And he also was able to nurture that curiosity and inquiry that many of us have, particularly those of us who volunteer in a Scottish climate to go excavating in hill forts. That takes a certain attitude to the world. But he wasn't only interested in the immediate, he was always about supporting development. How can we take what we have found here further? How can we use it to enhance people's knowledge? How can we plan further and develop on what we found on any particular excavation? The colleague in the background with the yellow vest looking over is Sue. And Sue is one of our archaeology ambassadors. And here is that team of ambassadors pictured with Oliver. Oliver's were inspired by Oliver and this picture is taken uh, of the team at the stables on the Falkland estate. This is a group of very experienced excavators who were trained to undertake high level responsibilities on digs, often taking responsibility for other volunteers or school groups. And some of this team went on to study university level archaeology courses. And I know Oliver was extremely proud of that. And although Oliver enjoyed working with groups, he also had the patience and the skill to engage and support volunteers on a one to one basis. And here he is explaining scanning techniques to Christie on the East Lomond uh, Hill prior to the 2014 excavation. This exercise helped us to pin exactly where we would put our trial trenches, which in time would prove to be the basis for some very exciting archaeology. We came back to this site on the shoulder of East Lomond, outside the scheduled monument area, in 2017, where we did some filming of the excavations, we went back to a particular trench of great interest from the 14 dig. And under Oliver's expert guidance, he carefully excavated 
a 10 meter by five meter trench, layer by layer. It was a revelation. From seventh century early medieval material at the top level, down to late, and then to early Roman periods, on through Iron Age metalworking sites, and in the last few days of the dig, the discovery of a collapsed Bronze Age kist. It was an experience under Oliver's leadership that none of us who took part will ever forget. Oh, oh, oh did, I, did I mention the five stacked hearths with possibly more beneath those that we also found? An extremely rare find for any Scottish Hillfort site. The upshot of all of that was that our filming was chosen as one of the digs to feature in the BBC's Digging for Britain programme, Series 6 North. This slide is of Oliver preparing in the studio before our 50 minutes or so with Professor Alice Roberts. This experience was one of the highlights of our working relationship, an experience we both enjoyed and treasured. And we also believed between ourselves that it was unlikely to be the last time that the spotlight of national attention would be focused on the archeology span of East Lomond. So rich and unexplored is this site. I've spoken of Oliver as a very effective communicator. And here he is in full flow at Lacour Castle in Benarte after the successful excavation which he led there in 2015. He was a passionate advocate for community archaeology and helping people to understand the deep history of the land and the landscapes which surround us all. Every volunteer on every dig led by Oliver got some of his attention individually. He was supportive, encouraging, and always ready to engage with the thoughts and the theories of others. He even developed that highly prized skill of every good archeologist, the art of letting you down gently. You can picture the scene when the interesting looking artifact which you've spent precious time on, cleaning away the surrounding soil and calling over the archeologist convinced that you have the find of the day, only to be told it's just another stone. This slide is clear evidence of Ollie's ability to inspire others. It's raining. We've canceled the dig for the day. The cloud is so low, you can barely see 10 meters in front of you. Never mind the hill behind where you've been excavating, which has disappeared. But is anyone in this group not smiling? They went off up the hill with Ollie to do some drawing and recording on a day when most ordinary mortals would prefer to be at home with a hot chocolate and a good book. It's the kind of inspiration which generates loyalty and a willingness to go the extra mile. This is how I will remember Oliver, my good friend and close collaborator on East Lomond. Warm, infectiously enthusiastic, someone with integrity, highly skilled and knowledgeable in his field and with a humanity and a set of values which endeared him to all of us at Falkland. I was privileged to have known him and to have worked with him. The Falkland estate in collaboration with Oliver's family have commissioned a beautiful oak bench, Ollie's bench, to commemorate the man. It was unveiled to guests in the last couple of weeks and it will sit beside the trust headquarters on the estate, looking up to East Lomond. He will forever be part of the foundation of that evolving archeological story. 
Thank you to my colleagues on TAFAC for affording me this opportunity to share something of the caliber of our sadly missed colleague with all our conference participants. It is right that we mark his passing. Scottish archaeology has lost a special talent and now we must attempt to build in the legacy which Oliver has left to us. Thank you. I'm now going to hand over to Professor Gordon Noble of Aberdeen University, who is going to be talking to us about another Hillfort and Fife, Clatchart Craig. Gordon. <laughs> 